Hey folks, it's Art Wolf. Welcome. We're going to do an unboxing video today of something brand new. Dawn's Early Light, The War of 1812 from Compass Games, which has just arrived. They were kind enough to send me a copy. This is a designer, uh, a design by designer David McDonough and uh, with art by Nadir El Farah. Um, and just from hefting the box, I can tell you that it contains a mounted map. Um, this is a pretty standard two inch Compass Games box that this comes in. And I'm guessing the art, somebody actually said, oh, that's funny looking art on the, the Jacobite Uprising box. And it turns out it was an actual period picture. I'm guessing that's the case here as well. Uh, it definitely looks like it. Um, so let's open her up and see what we get. Um, I am not going to bother to read you the back of the box, um, except to note that it is complexity 4 out of 10, and average time to play says 2 or 3 hours. The website says 120 minutes, actually. Um, and this was printed in China. I, I have a hunch that, and I don't know that they said this, that the position is going to be that single map games unless the counter number of counters is super high maybe, uh, are generally going to be printed in China from Compass Games um, with mounted maps. Um, two players. This is a two-player game. So let's open her up and see what we have. All right. First of all, um, we have a pack of cards. Okay. And we can pretty easily open these up. And I got bands back in stock, so I can take them out of the package without uh, just leaving them loose in the box. Um, so these are pretty standard playing card type stock. Uh, a little thicker than I think we see sometimes, but not like the super thick, crispy ones that we also sometimes see that feel really brittle. Um, it looks like there's just one deck. And it is a card-driven game. Um, it looks like the cards are keyed by year or by double year as the case may be because i see some prelude cards not quite a few some 1812 cards and some 1814 cards and uh, that sort of staging mechanic for card driven games is one that i like because it prevents some of the complaints about card-driven games that we often see where it's like, oh, well, this couldn't have happened because it didn't historically happen that year that, that it's happening in. Um, for the people has that uh, doesn't use that mechanic, and people complain about that. I personally don't think that that is a particularly significant complaint, but, you know, hey, the, you know, your mileage may vary. One thing that gamers in general, and war gamers specifically are no different, are really good at is complaining. Um, so, uh, we have four six-sided dice, three, two blue and two red, a uh, pretty standard-looking dice. We have what I take to be a rule book. Um, looks like it. So, yeah, so uh, full color, um, glossy stock, uh, more of a matte finish stock. Well, not matte finish, but more of a satin finish stock, I would say. But the print is very shiny, and it's full color, so there's kind of a lot of print so it, it, it ends up feeling, I think, glossier than it is, if that makes any sense. Um, we'll look at the map in a bit. Looks like there's looks like there's no shortage of uh, illustrated examples, which is good. Is this a okay? So we have a, an example, a full example. Well, not about full. We'll see. Uh, an example of play in the back, which looks like it's about a turn. Yeah. And then we have a section on card histories, which is always something I like to see in a card-driven game. Total on the book, rule book is 24 pages. So that means that the total amount of rules pages is maybe 16. So... Um, the game looks pretty straightforward to me from what I've seen of it so far. All right, so we have uh, two player aids. There is an American and a British player aid, which looks like the only thing that's different is the back. That's interesting. 
So this, uh, this kind of reminds me of a coin type mechanic where there are standard actions that you can perform on the turn. And that's uh, something I hadn't expected. I don't know how true that is. So we'll find out, however. Um, we do have uh, two, but really kind of one and a half counter sheets of what look like about five eighths or nine sixteenths inch counters, but these are the uh, the heavy heavy stock brown core pre rounded corner type type things that people like. Um, it's definitely um, becoming more appealing to people to have pre rounded corners, so you don't have to have to uh, round your own corners. Uh, and I certainly, as a as a dedicated corner rounder, to the extent that I've done multiple videos now about it. Um, I certainly don't mind seeing uh, games come with pre-rounded corners, as long as they don't also have center nibs. Uh, and it looks like uh, it looks like these do have center nibs, but they are so tiny that they are you have to actually look for them. So, so I say awesome. I don't mind seeing that at all. Now we also have a board, and it feels bigger than typical actually in that it like barely fits in the box. Uh, typically there's just a little more room on mounted boards. Um, that could be my imagination. And this is kind of a vertical map. We're gonna try and set the map up without putting the cards on the floor. That would be cool. Hold on one second while I arrange. Part of the new arrangement. Um, is that I have a little more ability. I need a new camera mount for these kinds of videos is what I need. Um, okay, so I'd seen graphics of the board and I gotta tell you, and it, this is laying on top of my mat here. So it's probably not laying as flat as it might otherwise um, were that not the case. And it is laying exceptionally flat for a first time getting laid out. Um, so anyway, I had seen pictures of the map on, the, on their web page. And I have to tell you, I think it looks better in person. That's something I've noticed with Compass in, in a few cases. Um, their version, for example, of Fortress Europa is, I, I saw the counters on the, the internet. See, somebody took pictures of, of the game and I was like, really? It does look like they have a lot of wasted space on them and they, they, the, the print doesn't look that big. Um, and then I saw them in person and it's totally fine. Um, so that's an interesting thing. There, there's sort of a weird satin finish of this too that I haven't seen before. Uh, lays nice and flat. I think it's it's reasonably pretty. Um, there's not that many, there's not a high space count here. So I don't know how that's going to work. Uh, but if this works kind of like a coin or coin-like or coin-esque mechanic, then maybe that makes complete sense. Um, looking at the pieces, which are not totally not the kind of pieces you would expect to see. Um, we basically have recruits and regulars and militia and Indians um, and forts. And that's pretty much it. Um, so this looks, I got to tell you, um, this was not something that was necessarily on my radar, but it looks more interesting looking at it physically. Um, and having it had a chance to actually leaf through it, uh, I, I'm more interested in it now than I was before. So we'll see if we can't get this. It's a two-player game, and, and in the, this time and space, I may be able to get this to a table and get you a follow-up video on it before the end of days. So that would be awesome. So what we've been looking at here is Dawn's Early Light, The War of 1812, a new release uh, here in 2020, and The Dark Age by Compass Games. Um, it looks looks real nice. Um, so let's see what we can do to get you a follow-up video on it before too long. Um, thanks for watching. If you've enjoyed the, the flip through, please give the video a thumbs up. Please subscribe to the channel and don't forget to click the little bell icon to get notified when new content comes out. If you would like to support our Roll Slayer, please share the video around on whatever social media channels you are on or click on the Patreon link in the video description. Thanks again for watching and until next time, happy wargaming.